Saints of God, welcome to Sabbath School Devotion. My name, Edwin Estime. Now, when the prophet Samuel was looking for a king to replace Saul, God led him to the sons of Jesse. And as Samuel looked at Eliab, the first son of Jesse, Eliab was strong, tall, handsome. And in the eyes of Samuel, this man had all the right physical features to be the next king. But God told Samuel in 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. This will be the theme of today's devotion to how God looks at the heart in all matters. As men, we tend to look on the outside. I mean, we care about how big something looks. We care about how grandeur it appears. We care about how much it costs. For us, we measure success based on outward appearances. But God sees past all those things and he looks directly at the heart of the matter. So in today's devotion, we're going to look at how God takes note of when we give our offerings to him. But first, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you have done for us. Now, Lord, teach us and show us how we should give our offerings to you and in what attitude. In Jesus we pray. Amen. So, true story. Nancy was a single mother with young children. Her ex-husband sent her only a small amount of grocery money every week. So small, it couldn't even feed one person, much less a family of four. But Nancy decided to begin giving to God from her little bit of grocery money and trust him to provide. Shortly after, she got a job with a cookbook company. Now, this company paid Nancy to go grocery shopping and prepare and cook meals so that they could take pictures of, of the meals for the cookbook. And when they were done taking pictures, Nancy could keep the food she had purchased and prepared. Now, this is a fascinating story that illustrates um, the faithfulness in giving offerings to God regardless of the financial situation. But I want you to emphasize that in Nancy's case, we can see that God took notice of her sacrifice to the church. Now, we find other examples of this in the Bible where God highlights those who give according to his pleasure. Mark 12 verses 41 through 44. And he sat down opposite the treasury box and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which makes a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who who are contributing to the offering box, for they are contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put everything she had, all she had to live on. Now, Jesus understood her motives. He was able to see that she believed in the service of the temple to be God's appointment. And she saw her own responsibility to do her part to sustain it. Even though she could um, not provide as much as others, her heart went with her gift. She was noticed by Jesus, not because of the amount that she gave, but because the value she gave was estimated by her love for God and her interest in his work and cause. Acts chapter 10 centers around a Gentile, a Roman centurion named Cornelius. We find his story in verses 1 through 4. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort. A devout man who feared God with all of his household, gave alms generous, generously to the people, and prayed continuously to God. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and said to him, Cornelius. And he stared at him in the terror and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. 
Now, take notice of what is said about Cornelius in verse 4. Your alms or offerings have ascended as a memorial before God. God took note of the generosity of Cornelius. Much like Nancy, much like the poor woman, it is not the amount that impresses God. It is whether your heart was in it. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Brothers and sisters, God is not looking at how much you give in monetary value, but how much of your heart is attached to the offering that you give. God doesn't want you to view offering as a mandatory obligation, just like paying your taxes. He wants you to sincerely, faithfully, lovingly, and carefully give your offerings to the church. And it is only then that God will notice your offering. Saints of God, keep the faith.